Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. And this week we're taking a look at yet another fabled overdrive pedal, this time designed to capture the sound and feel of arguably the most revered and valuable amplifiers in history, the Dumble Overdrive Special. We're of course talking about the Hamida Audio Zen Drive. <laughs> Go into any good guitar shop in the world and odds on you'll find a pedal that claims to be an amp in a box. Whether it's the hallowed tones of a crank Marshall Plexi, a Vox AC30 running flat out or a slightly ragged Fender Bassman, there's no shortage of pedals claiming to do exactly that. What you probably won't find, however, is too many pedals with such a storied and interesting history as the Hamida Audio Zen Drive, yet alone one designed by an ex-NASA employee. Indeed, after Alfonso Hamida's childhood dream of making pedals for electroharmonics failed to become a reality, after electroharmonics stopped production in the mid-1980s, Alfonso settled for the very next best thing, becoming an aerospace engineer at Maryland NASA, and it was around about this time that he heard a recording that would have a profound effect, an instrumental version of the Beatles' Golden Slumbers, taken from the album Come Together, a guitar tribute to the Fab Four. And thus, in 2003, Alfonso set about designing his first pedal, one that would recreate that sound, which, as it transpired, was a rather formidable pairing. Robin Ford and his 1983 Dumble Overdrive special. The resultant pedal, the Mosferatu, was released that very same year, and after finally finding its way into Robin Ford's hands, it was quickly abandoned. Robin Ford's feedback being that it had too much gain. Alfonso reverted to an earlier prototype of the pedal, and thus it was in early 2004 that the Zen Drive was born. A simplified early three knob version with only volume, tone, and gain, very quickly working its way to Robin Ford in time for a Japanese tour. Shortly later, a fourth control was added voice, which, as Alfonso himself puts it, allows you to fine-tune the pedal to your amp, either subtracting or adding bass, and being very interactive with all of the other controls. But what does a Zen Drive sound like? Well, I guess the bigger question, what does a Dumble Overdrive Special sound like? Of course, it's hard to accurately or adequately describe any sound without getting bogged down in a mire of vague superlatives or pretentious twaddle, especially when the legend that follows Dumble amplifies is that each one was designed with the player in mind, and thus all sounding different. But if I were to try and generalise the sound of a Dumble Overdrive special, probably better hand it over to Dave Hunter, who for Vintage Guitar Magazine wrote, Think thick creamy chocolatey overdrive, singing sustain, an abundance of harmonic content, loads of texture and dimensional detail. Feel-wise, think uber player controllable dynamics and an immediacy that lends itself to a wired to your fingertips playing experience. If you feed off the swampy compression of a labouring tweed amp, Dumble's probably not for you. If you're into raw and vintage tones rather than elevated and refined, probably not. 
that smooth, refined, singing sustain of a Dumble Overdrive special is of course legendary, and even more so since Dumble's death in 2021, they are more sought after than ever, no doubt aided by the incredible list of players who put one to incredible use over the years. Robin Ford, Eric Johnson, John Mayer, Joe Bonamassa, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Larry Carlton, Carlos Santana, Sonny Landreth, the list goes on, and as such, it's no surprise that a pedal, such as the Zen Drive, which claims to capture the nuance, tone and feel of such an amplifier, but for roughly less than 1% of the outlay, is quite so popular. I guess it is hard to say just how accurate a Zen Drive is to an original Overdrive special. But I guess the greatest compliment that you could ever pay it is that still after all of these years, when Robin's original Dumble isn't available or not really practical to tour with, he chooses a Zen Drive. In fact, in an ever-changing array of pedalboard lineups over the years, the Zen Drive has been pretty much the only constant. And having owned mine now for a good decade or so, it's easy to see why. That thick, mid-heavy singing sustain that we kind of talked about earlier is an exceptionally playable sound under the fingers, as well as being an incredibly versatile pedal. It takes pretty much any guitar you choose to throw at it. It's dynamic and responsive in much the same way as an actual amplifier and plays nicely with other pedals, which isn't something you can always say of such a characterful and distinctive sounding overdrive pedal. Now, the interest of trying to cover all bases, this next clip is going to be taken from, I think, the 2018 Buck and Evans show where I'm playing a Strat into a Black Star with, you guessed it, a Zen Drive.
So the million dollar question, can you go out and buy a Zen drive? After all, a lot of the pedals that are mentioned consistently in the same breath as a Zen drive, the King of Tone, the Klon, the Tim, etc., all fall into the category of an Obtanium, or at the very least, ludicrously expensive Obtanium, I guess. Fortunately, the answer as of now, as of this exact moment in 2022, yes. As of 2013, 2014, I couldn't find an exact date. Production of the Hamida Audio Zen Drive was transferred to Love Pedal. Now, no Love Pedal kind of disappeared off the radar in the pandemic, but again, as of now, as of 2022, their website is live with my mug on the front of it, unfortunately for you guys. And thankfully, you can buy a Zen Drive for $240. Inevitably, there are those who will tell you that an original Alfonso Hamida built and signed Zen Drive sounds infinitely better than the later Love Pedal versions, but oddly enough, those telling you that tend to be the ones trying to sell you one at an inflated price on Reverb. Years later, there are of course any number of overdrive pedals in the market, which all claim to capture the sound and feel of a Dumble Overdrive Special, but with so many of them featuring that distinctive four-knob layout, it's easy to see where the inspiration lies. And nearly a decade on since the Zen Drive's release, it's easy to see why it is still the standard bearer when it comes to Dumble in a box style pedals. You can kind of legitimately claim to be one of, if not actually the first amp in a box style pedal. Two decades on, still stands the test of time. As ever, I'm Chris Buck. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. This is Friday Fretworks. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already, and I shall see you next week for another episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you soon.